Timer. Hi. Uh, we're going to talk about microservices. Uh, that's me, and that's all you need to know. <laughs> <laughs> a quick straw poll. Uh, if you think you know what a microservice is, would you please raise your hand? Okay, I'd say about 5% to 10%. Great, thank you. I had a problem. This was my problem. I was getting an email with a PDF attachment. I'm going to show you what it looks like in a minute. And I needed to create a record in Salesforce in a custom object. And I needed to get the information that was not just in the email itself. I needed to get the information that was embedded in the PDF. Uh, who knows if you can parse a PDF in Apex? Can you parse a PDF in Apex? If you think so, raise your hand. If you don't think so, raise your hand. What about all those abstentions? Well, you mostly right. You can't parse a PDF in Apex. You can use Visual Force to generate a PDF. Uh, actually, I know somebody um, who actually was able to try and scrape some information out of the blob, the binary information, and he was successful. But I wasn't going to try, because I needed about a dozen data points. So that's my problem. Apex can't parse a PDF, but Apex can parse the text if you can get the text out of the PDF. Okay, so this is actually a perfect example of a, a microservice. So what is a microservice? When you can't do something that you need to do in the environment that you're in, you reach out into some other environment where you can do it. And then you get back what you can work with, right? So a microservice is a simple, discrete, and loosely coupled service, typically a web service. It should fulfill a single function uh, that is not available wherever you're working. Uh, it can represent a data entity or perhaps a service execution. It should not represent both because you want to keep it really bone simple. It should be independent of middleware. It shouldn't be complex. It should be like really simple. It shouldn't be constrained by the environment where it's deployed. And you're likely going to have a lot of them. So you want to follow some consistent patterns when you develop them. That way you get to keep the same patterns over a large collection of them. It makes it a lot easier. Uh, for maintenance. And of course, you should use the most efficient language for the task at hand. Basically, if you are a PHP coder, well, then maybe you want to build your microservice in PHP. But if you're a .NET developer, maybe you want to use Azure. It's up to you. Whatever works really well to get the goddamn thing up and running as quickly as possible, <laughs> right? Where can you deploy microservices? Well, Heroku is a great place because it's you know, polyglot, many, many different languages. But again, it could be in Azure, it could be Amazon. It doesn't matter. It's up to you. And that's what's really beautiful about it. Where does it fit in the proce process? This is, a, um, this is a sequence diagram of my process. And I don't know if I can zoom in on that. Let's see if I can try to zoom in on that just a little bit. But basically, no, nah, I can't zoom in. This is um, Salesforce. It sends an email to my Gmail account that says Gmail. And my Gmail forwards it to an email service, which uh, has an email handler, if you're familiar. How many people know email services in Salesforce? OK, some of you. Basically, you can consume an email in Salesforce. And um, that uses a, another piece of code called an email handler. And what that does is it parses the email, creates a record. That's what that first arrow is. Creates what's called a remittance record. And then it parses the attachments. Now, email services can do this. Apex can do this very easily. Takes the, the PDF that I'm getting, and it creates a child attachment. But that's all it can do. And at that point, it hands off down here by calling some asynchronous Apex. And it's the asynchronous Apex that makes a very simple web service call to my microservice, which is sitting on Heroku. It passes the binary of the PDF. And the service simply takes the binary and passes back the text. And it's a very, very simple service. And I'll show you what the code looks like. And then there's some Apex that says, OK, now I got the text. I can parse text. And it parses the text. It maps it to a structure, and it marshals it into the fields. And it does an update on that very same remittance record that it processed in the first place. Now it's doing an update. The first time was an insert. Now it's doing an update, and then it's done. OK, so that's where it sits in the process. Here is um, the service. I'm going to show you the code. It was written in the language Go, but it could have just as easily been written in Node.js or any other language. I didn't write it. A friend of mine wrote it. Because I'm not really a Heroku guy. I played with it, but I needed to get this thing up in a weekend. So I called my buddy Dale, that's Dale Keifling, and I said, Dale, uh, I need to parse a PDF on a service and have it pass back the text. And he said, no, oh, that's really easy. So he wrote it on a Saturday, and he handed it off to me, and I call it, and it works. And let me show you what it quickly looks like. Uh, I'm going to run it 
in Postman. This is Post, oops, is that my five minutes? Yeah. Well, just so I can prove that it works. Here's a PDF. It's sending it off. The first time it has to spin up the Heroku service, but then after that it's a lot faster. And there's the text, right? So what my process does is it parses it, pushes it in. All right? Play with microservices. They're lots of fun. <laughs>